Hi, Steve Selling, founder of FitTest. I'm going to do a series of three very short videos on atrial fibrillation and exercise. In part one, this video uh, will be on what is atrial fibrillation and the most commonly prescribed medications and give you a little bit of an idea on why those medications are prescribed. In part two, I'm going to really um, hone down on atrial fibrillation uh, in terms of um, those sort of clients for exercise professionals, how you can work with clients with atrial fibrillation safely. And in part three of this little series, I'm going to present a case study. So first of all, what is atrial fibrillation? So to understand atrial fibrillation at a basic level, which is really all this video is intending to do, uh, I'm going to first of all take you through a normal heart with a normal heart rhythm. So um, the four chambers of the heart, the right and left atrium and the right and left ventricles, the right and left ventricles are the main pumping chambers of the heart and the right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs to be oxygenated and the left ventricle pumps blood to the, the whole body uh, to deliver that oxygenated blood. Now the upper two chambers, the right atrium and the left atrium, also pump into the bottom chambers, so the right atrium pumps into the right ventricle, etc. But the actual contribution to the filling of the two ventricles is quite small at only about 20%. So the contraction uh, contribution of the two atria into the two ventricles is only about 20%. And the rest of the other 80% of filling is just coming through the, the great veins, uh, veins through these two chambers, flowing through the two chambers and into the, uh, the main pumping chambers. Now we come quickly to the sinus node, which is the main pacemaker tissue of the normal heart. And so what happens <clears throat> with a sinus, a sinus node is it, it will generate a heart rate that is normally in a good rhythm. And so we just call that normal rhythm, or if you like, sinus rhythm is the medical term for it. And so on ECG, uh, we see very evenly spaced ventricular contractions noted by these large spikes here. These are the ventricular contractions, the bottom chambers. Now in atrial fibrillation, the top chambers go into electrical chaos. And so the sinoatrial node no longer paces the heart. And so we have this chaos happening. And we have on the ECG, the chaos is shown along the baseline here as these are fibrillation waves. And really that's what it is, atrial fibrillation. So that all of this fibrillation down here is shown on the baseline. And you'll notice for the ventricular spikes or contractions that there is an arrhythmia, that the ventricles are out of rhythm. And the reason the ventricles are out of rhythm is because this chaos comes into the ventricles at chaotic or random times and generates an arrhythmia in the two pumping chambers. And clearly this is not very satisfactory for all sorts of reasons for the heart. And I'm going to go through a couple of those now. So the first thing is the problems with atrial fibrillation is that a blood clot can form because the chambers are not contracting properly, which would normally drive blood forward. But because these um, chambers are just sort of shimmering like a jellyfish, they can form a blood clot, which can get to the brain and actually cause a stroke. And it's a very common cause of strokes in, in, um, in people in, this, in uh, Australia. Now, the heart can also beat too fast, making exercise potentially unsafe. And I'll have more to say about that in subsequent videos. Now, exercise and atrial fibrillation, my strong um, uh, recommendation is that clients with atrial fibrillation, uh, they can exercise safely, and I'll show you that in subsequent videos. But really, they need the advice of a clinical exercise professional, such as an accredited exercise physiologist or a physiotherapist. Now, I just want to quickly go over the, um, uh, the, the, the sort of medications that are provided for people with permanent or long-standing atrial fibrillation. Um, so first of all, just dealing with a blood clot situation, we need something to prevent blood clots. And in, the, in modern medicine, there are sort of four main drugs, but there are a couple that are very commonly prescribed. And you'll notice that three of them end in XABAN. Now, XA is, is a... Um, uh, factor 10A in the thrombogenic enzymatic uh, pathway that would form thrombin that is needed in a clot. 
And these three drugs here block that enzyme to slow down the, or block the um, clotting cascade. Uh, so the clots can't be formed. The most common of these is rivaroxaban or Xarelto, and then the other two are less commonly prescribed. Now, um, they all end in XABAN on the generic term, and then they have their different trade names. There's another drug, Dabigatran, which is sometimes given instead, and this is a direct thrombin inhibitor, and it's, the trade name is Pradaxa. Warfarin was given up to you know, maybe a decade ago very commonly for atrial fibrillation. It's a vitamin K antagonist, and I won't go into the pathway, but it also blocks uh, factor 10A, but also blocks some other enzymes in the thrombin forming enzymatic pathway. Trade name Coumadin, it's mostly commonly prescribed these days just for valvular atrial fibrillation, which is a small percentage of atrial fibrillation. Uh, but not for others because it is a fairly dangerous drug in that it has a narrow therapeutic range, too little and clots form and too much and there'll be bleeding. So it's not the preferred drug these days. These drugs over here are safer. Now, the heart can beat too fast, making exercise potentially unsafe. And the first line drugs for atrial fibrillation in people with long-standing atrial fibrillation are the drugs ending in LOL. These are the beta blockers. I've given you three here, the three most common, tenolol, metoprolol, and sotolol, and there are some other drugs here in brackets that are also sometimes prescribed. Um, now these um, slow the conduction or slow the electricity through into the bottom pumping chambers. And so they have the effect, they won't change the rhythm of the heart so much, although sometimes they can. So the heart will still be out of rhythm, but the main thing they do is slow down the heart, making exercise safer. Now the heart, um, some of the other drugs that are given are the calcium uh, channel blockers and the main two that are prescribed are amiodarone. And you'll notice sotolol coming up a second time because it's a calcium channel blocker. And these are membrane stabilizers to slow down the heart rate. And finally, digoxin, which also works through the pacemaker tissues in the bottom chambers, the ventricles, and digoxin, um, trade name lenoxin, and this will also slow the conduction uh, through, the, um, through into those bottom pumping chambers. So that's really all I had to say to you about um, atrial fibrillation in part one. And I hope you can go on and look at parts two and three of this small series. If you have any questions, please e email me at infomyfittest.com.au. Um, have a great day. Bye for now.